Hey guys, uh, I welcome you to this class. This class is on the analogies for the GRE and CAT. Uh, though the GRE is discontinuing with this concept of analogy, but uh, the CAT students or the other MB entrance exam in India might find uh, this useful. So, the analogies we are going to talk about uh, the types of analogy, and we are going to check uh, at some of the analogies. So, what's about uh, this class on analogy? Uh, what we are what we are going to study in analogy now analogy is quite an important uh, type of question in the GRE and uh, in the other exams we we'll, we are going to talk about the types of analogies and the probabilities which is another good concept uh, the distribution of analogies that uh, you can see in the exam so I'm going to talk about the different analogies that you can see in the exam and uh, if you are to guess something, how to make some sensible guess in some low scoring exam and how to go on uh, guessing in a high scoring exam. So what, what are you going to do when you don't know the analogies and you want to have the best sensible guess? What's, your going, what's uh, the strategy which is useful and how to apply and imbibe all these techniques with you? And then you can check out some of the analogies from the big book ETS, NOVA and the Baron. So that's the place where you can check out the things. So the key concepts of analogy uh, I'm going to talk on first. So analogy is not the kind of question where we can go on with the power of elimination like we did in the reading comprehension. This is not the kind of uh, uh, question where we can do that. So we have to first look at the uh, options, uh, look at the analogy which we are given and we have to make a sentence to draw a bridge or a short sentence that makes up the relationship. For example, if we see a fish and a school, then we have to uh, make a relationship like a group of uh, fishes, uh, fish is called a school. If we see a club and uh, golf, then club is used to play the golf. Now, be very careful now, club and golf, we can say that, okay, I play golf in my club, which is a uh, sports, but the analogies uh, have strong relationship, we are going to talk on that, don't worry. So there are some type of relation which uh, actually are most favorite in the exams and uh, uh, they make uh, things easy for us. The most important point here is that we can eliminate the options which cannot have any relationship with them and we are going to, we are going to see how to do that. We have to watch for eye catchers. Sometimes we can use the parts of speech concept and uh, sometimes we can reverse it. So guessing is uh, sometimes important in analogies when the questions uh, go on the uh, last side of the computer adaptive exam or uh, when they go in uh, with a low scoring exam so diplomatic language here is an issue too so this is the uh, type of analogies that you can have they could be synonym antonym member class degree of intensity part of whole definition lack of manner of function action and significance pertaining to different connotation worker and action you can check out the more details from this book GRE NOVA so these are the types of analogy but you know what the best uh, uh, part about this slide is that I can give you an estimation that 60 to 70 percent of questions and analogy can be done by taking either the antonym or the synonym relationship so that's what uh, is important here which is not written in the book which you will not uh, find explicitly told uh, this could be only uh, a survey by a person who is uh, doing a lot of analogies so you have to uh, the most of the analogies could be done by taking in the synonym antonym relation in fact most of the analogies are the synonym and antonym kind of analogies so the constraints of the examiner now we have been talking about the constraints that I have that oh god I don't have the time with me to study for the exam or I have lots of things with me I have a job the constraints of the examiner is that he cannot give any other relation than the 10 the second biggest constraint in analogy which is called the heart of uh, understanding analogies is that the relation is very strong no analogy could have a weak relationship why is it so because the author has to be non-controversial he cannot uh, take a weak relationship and make things for us so we are going to use the power of elimination in a selective way and uh, we are going to understand the constraints of the examiner the type of analogies to actually solve the analogies and when we keep all these uh, things with us uh, things become quite easy for us 
so how to guess when you don't know the meaning if you are having a very tough time in a low scoring exam like mba entrance how to guess so my personal estimate uh, is that 70% of analogies could be guessed uh, taking in an antonym and synonym based or uh, sometimes taking verb versus verb or verb adjective pairs so that's what you are going to do when you are going to guess now let's look at some of the analogies now Philately is a stamp collector, Numis, uh, numismatics is a coin collector, just remember these few words. These are the standard types which you can see in the easier ones. With the secondary meaning pen and camera, pen means rotation of camera. It's, an, it's, a, it's a tough analogy, it's uh, quite seen in the MB entrance in India. Determination of parts of speech is one way. Now uh, just uh, look at this Cloyd and J date. If you are to solve uh, this question and you have to pick somebody then you can do it uh, by taking in as an antonym or synonym case and for this question we have circumscribed, stifling, insatiable, cormorant, effeminate, consentious, rectilinear, graceful, penurious, fatuous. So cloyed and jaded both means uh, some person who is tired or some kind of that. So let's look the answer is B it's a synonym analogy. Okay, so when we look at the option, we can eliminate uh, the stupid ones. So, cormorant, you must know this meaning is a person who is unsatiable. So, this is done by the case that I was telling you that he, most of them are antonym or synonym. So, draconian and coercion, it's, uh, it's again a related one which uh, just look at all the options. Insouciant, resplendence, munificent, philanthropy, blatant, concealment, submissive, consequence, plant, existence. So draconian is person who is having this uh, coercion thing. So what's the answer here? The answer is B. It's a type of property. But it could uh, be termed in the uh, synonym kind of analogy also because a draconian has strict rules, similarly a munificent has philanthropic behavior. Or a draconian is a person uh, who has coercion and a munificent is a person who is philanthropic. So of course it's a type of analogy which is the property but we can still reduce it and assume it uh, and do some of the questions by taking in as a synonym and an antonym. Let's look at one more example. Resolute and will, it's a degree analogy. The answer here is that uh, resolute means very strong will and fanatic means very strong concern. Okay, so uh, in this 10 minute session I am not going on with some of the question in the class. We generally do more questions on this one, tough questions on this one. and. Uh, uh, you can check out the recordings of my class on Vizik. Then we talk about the Bible of this analogy of uh, around 50 or 60 favorite analogy which you might see in the exam which might hit in, in the exam or they might help you. So this is the analogy Bible that we talk about in the class. We talk about each of these analogies, their bridge word, understanding, which type they belong to. But uh, for this time I am going to end this very small session. I hope you got the essence of this analogy type of question. Thank you for listening to my video friends and uh, I hope uh, I was able to help you in this part. So thank you and best of luck.